Welcome to Outdoor Kitchen TV. This is your channel to learn everything you need to know about designing and building your own outdoor kitchen. We hope that you will learn everything you need to build the outdoor kitchen of your dreams and we wish you many happy barbecues with your family and friends. Here is how to pour a concrete pad for your outdoor kitchen island. Do it yourselfers shouldn't be afraid to pour concrete. It's very inexpensive and easy to do yourself with a few pointers. The first thing we need to do is measure the area that we're going to pour our concrete and get the square footage. Then we go down to Home Depot or Lowe's and we find these quick creek concrete bags and on the side they have a chart here that tell you how many bags you need for square footage. We're pouring a simple two foot by ten foot long concrete pad, about twenty square feet. So we simply look on the side here and it tells you um, that we need ten bags for our concrete pad. Then we go ahead and we pick up some um, some ladder wire because ours is real narrow. This adds extra strength to your concrete so it won't crack. It'll be in the center of the concrete. We could have got a wire mesh if we are pouring a wider pad. That would be like this, but um, much wider that you'd put into the concrete for extra strength. You'll need some 2x4s to frame out your uh, around the concrete where you're going to pour. You'll need some rock to pour some rock in the bottom here for water drainage underneath your concrete pad. Now in places like this, this tract housing in Southern California, Arizona, the ground is real hard. So we're not worried about it settling. So we're not going to dig deep down and make a, a, a extra strength base because it's already hard like concrete. But if you live in areas where the soil is kind of soft, you're going to need to dig out the soil and compact it down and make a real strong base so that your thousand pound outdoor kitchen island won't settle and become unlevel over the years. So that's very important. Uh, if you're not sure how to do it, ask them down at Home Depot about uh, what's good for your area. Now, once you have all these materials back to your job site and you have your basic tools to do concrete, you have a metal trowel to smooth it out, you have a wheelbarrow or a concrete mixing bin to mix your concrete and a shovel and a water hose out here, you're ready to go. We're just going to dump a bag into this uh, bin, add some water and mix it with our shovel because it's not very many bags here and we'll pour it right into our area. Now, if you were doing a larger concrete pad like the size of this patio, you would want to rent an electric mixer from Home Depot. It would really speed up the process and save your back. And it, or consider hiring a concrete company with a, uh, a pumper, a hose, to pump the hose back into your yard and make a nice concrete pad. But concrete's very inexpensive. Now, a lot of people want to use pavers. It's better to make a level concrete pad first for your outdoor kitchen island and then bring up the pavers around it. Now when you're calculating a concrete pad for that situation, you want to take the depth of your frame, for instance 28 inches, add the cement board an extra half an inch on both sides, front and back and on the ends, and whether you're going to have stucco or stone veneer to calculate the depth and size of your pad. You're also going to run your utility lines through the dirt and up through the soil first before pouring this concrete and try to position your gas line uh, where the grill will be uh, somewhere in there and come in six to eight inches from the edge so that your your pipe will not hit the steel framing. Same with electrical lines. Most usually they just bring the electrical lines and the gas stuff all up in the same location through the concrete. And then try to bring, if you're going to drain your water and have water for your sink, Try to bring that up where your sick module is going to be, so that way you don't have to run too much piping. So those are the basics. Now let's get started and start mixing our concrete. Using a mattock, we excavate the dirt down here. We're going approximately uh, six inches down here. That way we'll have space to level off our two by four forms and to put our, con our rock base. We'll have to dig all the way down 10 feet here to that stake. Uh, so you can see it's it's not that much work. It may be a half day's project here to do this job um, by hand, the old-fashioned way, and we're going to save a lot of money. We spent forty dollars 
for this 10 bags of concrete and uh, we have a few tools here so it's very inexpensive to do it yourself it's just a lot of labor and uh, it's definitely going to be a uh, a big savings on the bottom line here that we can put the money towards a nicer grill or um, a nicer finish on our outdoor kitchen the more you can do it yourself the more you're going to save uh, seventy percent of the cost of an outdoor kitchen is labor uh, the other 30% is the materials. So the more you can do it yourself, the more you can save of the 70%. Now we're preparing our form boards. We're measuring it and we're about to cut them off here on our uh, sawhorse. What we've done is we've got one 10 foot long 2x4 going across the back and then we're going to have a 2x4 on each end. Once we have our 2x4s cut, we'll go ahead and use our wooden stakes and pound them into the ground to hold our form boards at the proper uh, level mark. We're doing that now. So we hammer our stakes in with our sledgehammer here down into the soil. Then we'll use our our level and we'll screw these boards in so that they're perfectly level with our concrete slab. Here we're screwing in one of the end frames to here level to the patio. You want to have your screws on the outside so that way you'll be able to unscrew these boards. You wouldn't want your screw on the concrete side or you won't be able to get your screws out. There. So now we have our end nice and level with the patio and we'll continue along with the rest of the boards till it's nice and square and level to our concrete patio. So this is a ratcheting cutter. You just keep ratcheting it down. It cuts the PVC pipe that easy. So we got our first four footer cut. We, then we're taking our, our elbow here and test fitting it like that and we'll continue uh, working here. We've got our first piece of conduit here, electrical conduit with our elbow here on the end. Now we're going to cut another piece 12 inches long to come out of the top here high enough above our concrete slab. Okay so you can see how we have it nice here. We would go ahead and take our glue and glue these together so it's nice and strong. Now we'll go ahead and uh, install our, with our electrical conduit in place, if we wanted to bring a gas line or a water line, we would have also brought it through this trench and set it up before pouring the concrete pad. Now we'll demonstrate how to pour a concrete pad. Now we want to put three quarter inch crushed rock here. We'll put two to three inches of thickness of rock down here uh, to go underneath our concrete pad uh, for water drainage underneath the slab and to strengthen this up. Once we have that, we'll go ahead and cut our uh, rebar to fit here, our ladder wire, and we'll start mixing and pouring the concrete. Spread your rock evenly throughout the uh, pad here. Okay, we're dumping one 60 pound bag of quick concrete here into our mixing tub. We already put some water in the tub to get it started. You should wear a breathing mask for protection, gloves, and safety glasses when doing this. Concrete is very uh, bad to breathe. Read the uh, warnings on the uh, packaging. Now we'll go ahead and use our square nose shovel here and we're going to uh, just mix this concrete in. You don't want to overwater your concrete. If you find out you've added too much water, then just add some more concrete uh, to make the uh, mix uh, thicker. You'll be surprised how much uh, water is absorbed by this concrete. If you're not sure about how much water to use, read the instructions on the concrete bag. 
We've been mixing concrete for years, so we pretty much just do it by eye. Now we're trying to mix a, at least one and a half to two bags here in our tub at one time. That's why we have so much water. This is very hard work. If you have a bad back, you should hire someone to help you. Or you could rent a uh, mortar mixing, uh, electric mixer, and mix this in a tub. That's another way to do it. Or you could rent one, an electric mixer from Home Depot or a tool rental place. It's good if you have a razor blade, you can slice open the top of these bags, or you just have to tear it open by force like we're doing. Now he'll go ahead and pour half that bag in there and see how the, uh, what the consistency looks like and if he needs to put more in or he can just stay with that. Uh, he'll just judge by the eye and he'll continue mixing. Now we have a block wall fence here behind our outdoor kitchen so we're not concerned with any combustible materials but if you have a wooden fence or a uh, wooden siding of your house you would need to have a high backsplash uh, to, for safety behind your island here. So that's another tip, uh, a backsplash. We've poured our first tub of concrete into the uh, pad here and now we're mixing up our, our second. Now that we're halfway full of the concrete in our slab, we'll go ahead and lay down some ladder wire. Now the only reason we're using ladder wire is because this slab is just barely over two feet wide and it was convenient to do. Um, if we were pouring a wider slab, we would have used the mesh panels that you cut to fit that provide a lot more coverage of steel um, into your concrete. Now by putting this in here, this is really um, increasing the strength of your concrete pad and will help it uh, not to crack. It makes a big difference. I've been pouring concrete all of my life and whenever you put this uh, rebars or, or um, this mesh wiring into your concrete pad, um, my concrete never cracked. So it's really uh, worth the extra few dollars. These ladder wires are only a little over four dollars a piece and they sell the um, at Home Depot, the mesh wire panels for around eight bucks um, a, pa a panel section. So it's very inexpensive and it's definitely worth it to put it into your concrete. So now you can see how we've been covering the, um, the metal wire with the concrete here and it's, it's inside of the pad now. Now we want to smooth out the concrete with our metal trowel and then we're going to take that wooden board and go across trying to make the concrete level, perfectly level um, with our frame there. You can see how he, he goes back and forth and he's making a level. Now if there's any low points he would add more concrete. Just take your time and make this nice and level. If it's a hot day and you see your concrete starting to dry out, spray it with a little bit of water. Uh, mist it with water, you know, don't let it dry out while you're doing this. So he'll work his way here across and make it nice and level. That's how you do it, just back and forth like that. Adding cement in the low spots. And uh, he'll work his way across. We'll add a little bit more concrete down here on the end and we'll have this done. Fantastic. One afternoon we made a nice concrete pad. Okay, Sam, great job on the uh, barbecue uh, pad here. How would you rate this project on a le scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the easiest and 10 being the most difficult? 
Um, I would rate this uh, this easy job uh, about a five, just because we're doing a lot of lifting on the concrete. But definitely, any homeowner could do a slab like this. Um, it's really easy, not very hard, really easy to mix it with. Um, like I said, I would rate it as a five, just because of the weight of the concrete concrete bags. But that's about it. And would you say that um, if it was larger than this, uh, they should rent an electric mixer or uh, that would help a lot? Yes, definitely. Like right here we have this small piece right here that, that I make. Um, if you go something bigger, it is better recommended if we have an electrical mixer. And if you have two people um, like that, if it's really hot, mm -hmm. um, your, your concrete doesn't get dry and it would be a lot easier for a bigger piece than this, yes. Fantastic job, Sam. Thanks very much. Thank you.